everyone, Catherine here with an amazing interview with today's special guest, creative director for Jennifer Hudson's most recent performance at the 2020 Democratic National Convention, Michael Apostolos. Um, Absolutely. You just did an amazing thing. So let's spin through this one real fast. Tell me about your amazing time with Jennifer Hudson and the national, um, the Democratic National Convention here in Chicago. The process, yeah. how you found your location. I had worked with her on um, two other performances, one for CBS's John Lewis special for the BT Awards. So we had a, a nice, fresh relationship um, creating mm-hmm. together. Um, so they asked me to, you know, creative director, designer performance for the DNC, knowing, um, you know, what the DNC, and knowing what both conventions stand for in the sense of, you know, that they're trying to push a message. Um, I knew that it, it, it uh, was important for her performance to stand out and feel powerful and, um, and to be special. Um, Jennifer's voice is so beautiful on its own that, um, you know, you could put her in a room with no lights, no cameras, no videos, no, you know, no added element and you'd be captivated and you'd be moved just right off the bat. So, you know, a big part of me as a creative is I, my job is to amplify, you know, uh, the music uh, visually, bring it to life, to add another element. Um, people can be captivated, you know, via what they're hearing and seeing. So, but because her voice is so special, I didn't want to overpower it. I didn't want to step on it. I didn't want to muddy the water. So I knew I wanted to find a location that was just as powerful and beautiful as her voice so that both just complement each other and that the and that the venue isn't overpowering and distracting. So we went with a cultural center in Chicago because um, I didn't want a location that was too Chicago in the sense of people see it, you know, like tourists see it or even people from Chicago see it and they're like, you know, I've, I've been there, you know, I know that that's the John Hancock or that's the bean, you know, I wanted it to be something that's kind of special. Um, a little more intimate. And intimate and not everyone knows the cultural center or they know of it, they haven't been in it. Yeah. I picked the Preston Bradley Hall, which is like the main room in there. And it has the largest Tiffany glass dome ceiling in the world. Um, So that in and of itself was just captivating and beautiful. And we went in there, did a walkthrough. I was blown away by it. Did another walkthrough with Jennifer. She came in and, and, and I think instinctually started singing the song that we'd be filming there. And she, she said that the room was a, a singer's dream acoustically. Um, you know, once I heard that, I was like, this just, this all makes sense. It felt right. It was natural. It was raw and it was intimate um, with very little added production. And, you know, we were there to capture Jennifer and her beautiful voice. So um, that collaboration and that performance meant a lot and it felt special. And I was honored to be a part of it. That's very cool. Um, yeah. And and I know you had said before, um, towards the end, that she had done something really miraculous towards the end of her song. Yeah. Because of the um, the acoustics in the room and how you could stand in the middle of that room with no microphone and just sing, and the way that her voice naturally just carried through the hallways. We wanted to captivate that. We wanted to capture that and um, and and show that the best way that we could, which was having her actually step away from the microphone. You know, she, she said she, you know, she didn't want to feel limited with this microphone. She wanted her voice to carry because it does carry. You're standing there and you are, you are in awe listening to her. You know, sometimes you have to remind yourself, like I was finding myself, had to remind myself like, okay, nope, nope. Like pay attention, you know, cause it's like, she's, it, her voice is, it's mesmerizing. You know, yeah. Mesmerizing. So, um, there was a point at, towards the end of the performance where she stepped away from the microphone wow. and walked away and just sang openly into the room. You know, we had a few mic, uh, room mics just for pickup, obviously, because it's going on TV. So we want to give, you know, their audio team, their technical things they need. But uh, we definitely didn't need it. You know, her right. voice carried and everyone heard it and everyone was in awe of it and, and, every, and you know, it grabbed everyone's attention. So that was a, that was a great moment to end the performance. And it was the end of all the performances too, which is even nicer to help her stand out a little bit that way. Exactly. Yep. That's it was so beautiful. And you've had opportunity to work with not just Jennifer, but um, a, a ton of amazing artists and performers. Tell me uh, who are some of the great people you've worked with in the past? 
Yeah, I I, um, I I dominantly worked with with Chance the Rapper for a long time, um, and that's where I got you know a lot of my start from, um, and a lot of my step forward into the industry um, from you know since then I've worked with you know continue to work with him, work with work with Marin Morris, uh, Alicia Keys on the Grammys performance, uh, Noah Cyrus, um, SZA. There's been a there's been a whole whole bunch of them, and, and you know the list keeps keeps growing and the collaborators keep growing and it's you know i i you know i'm grateful for all the all of the opportunities and, and all the moments i've you know gotten to help create and you're a, a self-made man you know just you kind of started from the bottom and worked all your way up to the top tell me yeah you know, tell me a little about that yeah i um you know i started uh, as an intern at a local lighting company I knew I wanted to get in the industry. Didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. Lighting kind of captivated me. It just, um, you know, was something that I, I paid attention to at shows. I was interested in it. Um, so I started there. And from there, it, it, it kind of became secondhand nature to, to jump in and becoming a lighting designer and wanting to put on my own shows with light and, uh, and entertainment. Uh, and uh, from there, you know, internship grew into opportunity as a freelancer. And from there you know, years of freelancing, you know, turned into myself wanting to create a creative hub, my own company, my own place to work out of. Um, and that's where we are now. How many people do you working with you right now? Um, I've got about five to a dozen people working with me. You know, it fluctuates on projects, you know, kind of on a need basis, especially now during COVID, um, you know, but, but we're all freelancers. Um, and we all worked as freelancers before I opened Fourline, and Fourline kind of great, gave us a, a place to come together and create out of, you know, give us some infrastructure um, to do some larger projects and 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 to work more seamlessly together. And um, you know, we just want to continually better ourselves and get better at what we do. And you're from Chicago? From Chicago, born and raised. Are you? You have any plans on going to a coast or something like that? Or you're just you're uh, happy here? You like it? Yeah, I don't know. I like it here. I, I mean, like, project uh, to project, of course, if someone needed you to like, yeah. Yeah, fly to New York or something that's different, mm -hmm. but you continue to plan yeah, on I, being I mean, here. I, I find myself, obviously, pre-COVID, I find myself going to New York and LA and oh, all the time. So it's like um, coming back to Chicago is always like a breath of fresh air. Mm. You know? So that, I'm not sure if I, I want to move. Um, it's nice to go there, do the work, and then to get out of LA for a minute, you know, mm -hmm. go to New York you know, do the work, come, come home. Um, you know, this is where the family is. Um, a lot of my friends are here. So I, there's something about Chicago that's magical in and of itself too, that I just love. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what, uh, we'll see what happens. Well, what's next for you? What's on the agenda? Yeah. I've got, you know, we got a couple, um, a couple more performances with Jennifer working on a couple of TV specials that, you know, four lines producing, um, you know, we're designing a, a few Christmas, you know, holiday feel good celebrations that are coming up. So that'll be fun. You know, people can't gather in person right now. So we want to bring that sense of community, you know, via TV, which everyone can, everyone can watch right now. Uh, you know, and I'm sure everyone's kind of grasping for some sort of feel of community and just something to make them feel good. There's so much going on in the world right now, um, which is all very important, but I think everyone is, is look, you know, everyone does look forward to that, that feel good, special that they can watch. Um, so we're working on that. And then a few COVID friendly um, events. That's, that's growing. You know, that's a, that's a work in progress given kind of the, the temperature of the world right now. And um, it's a slow process because you want to make sure you do it right. Um, yeah. And you want to make sure it's safe, but you also want to make sure it's impactful and that it, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's worth doing and that people feel good about it, you know? So there's a few of the, the kind of broad things that we're working on. What do you personally do to make yourself feel that comfort and that community during COVID? Is there something that you're doing these days? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I reach out to people more than I think I did before mm. to just have conversation beyond work. I found myself being so busy before COVID with work that I would, um, I would always reach out, right? And you always try to stay in touch with people, but um, I don't think I allowed myself to really live in the moment and live in those conversations and to really just focus on how are you doing? How, how am I doing? And, you know, is there anything we can, you know, we can do together, you know, that'll 
you know, that'll, that'll help you. Is there anything I could do for you that'll help you? And, and just like, you know, leaning on your friends and family. And I think, uh, obviously your work friends too, you know, it's, yeah. it's fun talking about the past, reminiscing on these, these events and these shows we've done before COVID. Um, so that's been, that's been really fun. Kind of motivates you, gets you excited for once this is all over. You know, I can't yeah. wait to see the industry come back. The industry's, uh, full of so good, passionate people that I know that once it comes back and once we get the, um, I mean, you look at it now, like it's not, it's not coming back, but there, you know, cracks are starting to appear with oh, yeah. little things like people are so passionate about it. You know, can't wait. We until can't, we all, can't wait until we can all get in a stadium or arena or a theater together and, and just, you know, feel that sense of community, feel that music. And, uh, you know, it's powerful music, music, uh, and gathering is just, it's so, it's so, uh, powerful. That is very powerful. Um, last question. What, uh, what advice would you give someone that wants to go into your field or into entertainment and looks up to you? What would you say to them? I would tell them, take every opportunity that they get to start off. You know, don't be afraid to try either. You know, if there's an opportunity that comes to you that's in the, just in the, in the wheelhouse of the industry that you want to do, you know, but it's not exactly the route you want to go down. I mean, don't be afraid to take it and try because everyone knows someone in the industry. And you're going to get your you're going to get exposure, and it's going to get exposure to different avenues of, of the industry too, or of your industry you're going into. It'll help you down the road when you are in the position you want to be in, and you have to deal with that avenue or that subject of 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 your line of work. It'll help you. You'll be more prepared. You'll have a better understanding of what goes into doing that job too, um, which totally helps. Um, so I, you know, I have a lot of people. You know, I've been reaching out via like social media, asking for advice. And, you know, I try to always give them my email and, you know, try to always answer um, and give them honest advice, you know, to keep pushing, keep pushing through those slumps too. Of, you know, when you, you know, there's always a slump in the road. There's always many slumps in the road uh, when you're trying to advance forward and, and you just got to keep pushing through them. And once you push through them, it, it always, uh, it always, there's always a peak at the end. You know, there's always that uphill moment where you're, where you're like, all right, I'm happy I got through that moment. You know, I'm happy I kept going and, and now I'm happy doing what I do. So, yeah. I feel like that's half of it. Half of the success is just, I don't want to say outliving the competition, but just persevering through the dark times. You know, we all have a winter. We all have a slow time. The COVID, COVID's still for everyone right now. You know, absolutely. these things happen. Yeah, absolutely. And don't be afraid to like, you know, don't be afraid to communicate either to, your friends, your family, and your coworkers about what you're going through, you know, not only professionally, but personally, you know, it's like, you're going to hit those slumps no matter what in almost all industries and almost in all everyone's lives personally, you know, it's when you get through that slump that you are so grateful that you kept pushing through. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks again. A million times over. I owe you this one. Hey, no, yeah, no this problem. is about me now. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. It's been, it's been great talking to you. Yeah, it's been great talking to you. And keep in touch for sure. Amazing things happening for you and all these future performances. And Absolutely. I hope the best for your business. One more time, give a quick shout out to the business. Thank you. It's Four Line Creative. Um, right. And, uh, Website, fourlinecreative.com. Yeah. Fourlinecreative.com. Great. Awesome. Amazing. Well, Michael, I'll see Thank you later. You. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. It is always really fun to talk to someone that is self-made and worked really hard to be where they are. So inspiring. Again, this is Kay with Real Chicago, Real 360 saying, see you later.